So tell me, aren't these skyboxes just combusting with energy? These gas clouds, the black hole, the planet, you know, imagine all the possibilities and all the content you guys could be making with these. Hello everybody and welcome to Organian's Puzzle Box. In uh, today's video, I want to quickly break through, <laughs> break through. I would quickly like to go through the project that I've just released on our station, Patreon and Gumroad. It's my first volume uh, for, for Skyboxes, so the first library of Skyboxes. Um, I hope to release more volumes, uh, more libraries or whatever you want to call them for Skyboxes uh, in the near future. These are all handcrafted using multiple methods that I've employed throughout, you know, throughout the, the, these couple of weeks that I've, I've learned. Uh, I've used um, uh, quite a lot of texture stitching. I've used uh, Blender to generate nebulas. Uh, so, you know, I've, I've actually got um, nebula generators on my art station and Patreon and Gumroad. Um, they're there for some Blender Cycles, Blender EV. Uh, I've also used I've done some experimentation with some other software as well. I've played around with Houdini a little bit, but basically I've got these um, awesome skyboxes in my opinion that can be dropped into the, into the scene. The project itself uh, it comes, you know, for Unreal Engine, it comes with uh, some really nifty uh, packed uh, features, such as the ability to animate the skyboxes, the ability to have multiple ones in the same in the same material. They're all blueprint driven, so pretty much. Straight out of the box, you can just drop the blueprint in and then just add the, whatever textures you want to use and you're ready to go straight away. Um, you can block the sun using the um, using the skyboxes themselves so that it looks as if there's more volume and you've got light rays. As you can see in this particular shot behind me, you've got these light rays coming through, but the actual sun disk is blocked by the nebula, by the skybox, so it looks really cool. And imagine when you animate that, you've got the sun rays, they're all moving through, so there's like this, this sort of... Uh, you know, um, a volume that's that's literally allowing the sunbeams to look different and reflect different kind of light. So I hope you guys enjoy the content. I'm also going to do a very, very short demonstration of how the sun blocking sort of mechanism functions within the material. So stay tuned for that if you want to learn very quickly how I've done it. Uh, but other than that, this is just purely a presentation of this project. If you're interested in acquiring it, if you're a Patreon member, you can get this project without any additional fees. If you're not, if you want to just get this for the price of a coffee and you do, you guys, if you follow me, you know that I love my coffee. Uh, please consider purchasing this project on our station or the gum road. It's, as I said, it's the, well, it's a bit more than the price of a coffee right now just because of how much content is in here. But overall, I think it's worth it. I think you guys are definitely going to learn something from this as well, how to set up your own materials and how to, to, to set up your own workflow. So uh, without any more delays, I would say let's just begin and let's let you know let let's get the ball rolling. Okay, now we're in uh, the Unreal Engine project, the one that comes in in this um, pack with the HDRIs. Um, and what we've got here is we've got the black hole inside the project. We've also got like a sort of a planet face for a moon, and we've got the HDRI in the background as you can see and it's got already um, you know a texture applied to it now what i want to do is i'll select the black hole um, and you can see the black hole has all sorts of parameters in here as well you know for colors um, for how emissive it is uh, how quickly the rings would spin so for example if i move this a bit upward you can see the rings over there so i can you know increase the movement speed or decrease it I can also stretch the texture so it looks a bit different. I've got a Doppler intensity which changes the black hole itself. So just just part of the content within this pack, you know, the black hole itself is also a very nice addition. It's got a refraction around it, which again you can control its intensity and its power and also its size. So there's all sorts of things in here with the black hole. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide that as we don't need to see the black hole, and instead we're just going to look at our skybox. Uh, there's obviously a planet here as well, which I am also going to hide that. And I've also got this planet surface, which is literally just 
a surface. Uh, it's just a half, not even half a planet, but just something where you can just sort of use it as a backdrop. So, you know, you can get very close to it. It's got sort of a nice sort of texture around it. Um, so, you know, it's good for setting up scenes if you want to. This was just something for a cinematic that, I, you know, you could be using it for. So I'm going to hide that as well. And now we're just left with our... Uh, BP star dome and then we also have the post process and the directional light and the directional light uh, sorry I seem to have lost my directional light let me just see okay so the directional light is over there and the reason why it's disappeared is because I have uh, hidden the planet which contains also the atmosphere so I'm going to buy, bring that planet back in so I can have the atmosphere, which then allows for the sun disk to be viewed. Um, okay, so now with the um, star dome selected with the blueprint, you can see we've got quite a few options in here. So we've got the size of the scale of the actual uh, dome. So this is something that you'd want to play with. Now I can center this to zero. It's so big that it doesn't really matter where it is. Uh, because if I press F to look on it from the outside, you can see wherever you are, now we're very far away, you'll still see the same thing. That's because that's just how this material works. Uh, I'm just going to go back um, close to here to where the planet was, and I'm just going to try and get, you know, a bit closer. Right, so we are now within the skybox. You can see all around us we've got stars, and we've also got the HDRI itself over here, which is, uh, you know, like a, this combusted sort of... Um, uh, it's got like a combusted sort of look to it and we can change its tint if we want to so we can make it more green more blue more red we can also desaturate it if we want this is where we can load up the textures so there's the texture of the of the sky box um which in this project you'll get you know there's like six of them and there's also a bonus one over here but you can drop any of these so you know you can drop number two in there for example and then you can see that number two is now loaded in there. Uh, we can try maybe number three. And you'll notice now that number three is loaded as well. And then you've also got these alphas. So you can drop the alpha of number three, for example. And what the alpha does, it allows us to uh, hide the stars where they, where they shine and where they don't shine. And also it allows us to block the sun. And I will show you what I mean by that. So let's just say we bring the sun over into here, uh, maybe something like here where it's dark and there's no stars coming through, but obviously the, the sun is still shining through. So you'd go down here and you've got this, what is called the sun mask threshold. Now this is set to zero, but if I increase it, you'll see that the sun is now disappeared because it's being hidden by the alpha, uh, which is basically sh saying wherever it's b uh, white, there should be nothing coming through. But you can see that the sun rays are still coming through. You can see them over there. And when the sun is in a position where the alpha is pretty much black, then the sun will shine through like, like here. So you can see moving the sun around really creates these really nice effects, light lighting effects, right? So for example, over here, it's going to allow the light beams to come through there, but the sun is hidden by this area, which just gives that sort of feeling of volume into the, into the HDRI. Um, so obviously some other things in here, we've got the brightness of the HDRI, so we could, uh, you know, generally I would keep a 1.1 sort of brightness onto it. And if you go into your post process volume, we've got an option here for vignette, maybe put that to one, which will lighten up the scene a bit more, but you can also play with the, um, you know, over here in the local, um, sorry, in the, um, lens, uh, options into exposure. You can also play with that and just increase the exposure or decrease it or, you know, depending on what, what look you're going for. Um, some other things into the in the blueprint. So we've also got, you know, we can saturate or desaturate the skybox. Um, and then we've got some brightness and saturation for the extra cube map, which is something that I'm going to show you in just a second. And you can also rotate that. And also, very importantly, you also got a flow direction. So there's no flow map loaded, but the flow direction will still function. So as you can see, I've just moved the setting to here, for example, and you can see now that the skybox is going in that direction. So this is a vector X, Y, and Z. So it's all pulling in that direction. Obviously this is a bit too strong. So you may want to go for something a bit, uh, you know, like a smaller number, but also to help this out, you also want to drag in a flow map. So 
I do have this texture over here, which I normally use, so I can drag that in there. And once I do that, let me just take this content browser away. Now the the scene, the flow of, of how it's being pulled apart is going to change. So let's just give it a one, one, one to everything, which is again, a bit too strong. Actually a one, one, one may actually keep it in place. Um, so let's just try a zero, zero over there. So now the scene is sort of pulling inwards. Uh, but there's some other areas like here where you're seeing is doing something else. And, you know, this is this is sort of duplicating the 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 texture over and over again and trying to create a sort of mimic so a bit of movement. So you're going to have to experiment with this in order to get the right effect. And normally I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't, um, you know, um, recommend any values above, above 0 0.5. But you can go wild with this, like create some really really weird sort of effects something like that you know and this is obviously pulling in so you can get all sorts of different effects by just playing around with the flow map um, then we've got the um, saturation of the stars so if we increase the you know this saturation for example um, let me just go to something like a 10 then it's bringing these closer bigger stars into into the mix but then you can also do this for the far stars so that are very intense but you can also go to zero, which pretty much hides them. So that's that's an interesting sort of thing as well, which allows you to build the scene a lot better. Uh, as you can see, the stars do not come through here, at least not the small ones, because this is the alpha in here is blocking that, trying to create a bit of volume around it. Um, there's also the extra cube map. So what this, what this does, if we have a look in the folder here, I could drag another skybox and maybe bring in its alpha as well and now if we have a look this was the this is the actual this is the normal skybox over here but this is the new one that i've just added in so i can go into this setting over here where it says cube map rotation and i can actually rotate that so it's behind so now you've got a skybox all around you as you can see which is a very high resolution as well. So it envelops you because, because we added that extra cube map in here. And obviously we've got some levels of saturation and so on that we can play with. Um, so, you know, all those, all those settings from before are up there as well. Um, so a part of the, what, what I wanted to showcase to you guys, you know, in terms of what I've done to this material as a new thing, I'm just gonna bring up the material over here. The way I block the sun, so this is very, I think this is a very interesting thing just for you guys to know because this entire node setup that you're seeing here is in my previous tutorial about HDRIs, you can see that there, how I've set it up. And then in the previous, previous tutorial, you can see how I've created the HDRI, you know, the skybox itself anyway. But what I've done is I've also added the sun control. So what this does is basically um, two sky atmosphere light disk luminance one set to zero, one set to one. I've put both of these into a LERP node, and then I've got a, a multiply node between a texture sample and a sun mask, well, a parameter really, uh, just to set up the number that I want. It goes into the alpha and then goes into an add node between the entire structure over here of the whole setup or the skybox, and then it goes into this um, material. Now, again, if you follow my previous tutorial on how to create the skybox, and then if you follow my previous tutorial about how to create the animated flow map skybox, then you would already have all of this set up. Now, the sun control, as I said, this texture here is just an alpha map. It's connected to a texture object, so it feeds into, you know, it uses the same texture map as before, as, as something that you'd be setting up anyway. But effectively, it's just a texture like that, which is, uh, you know, an alpha and the alpha is just put into the multiply. So wherever the alpha is white, um, the sun will not shine through. Wherever it's black, the sun will shine through. And that's what this sky atmosphere light, list, light disk luminance is doing, basically. Um, you can see all the parameters in the material instances are here. So you can control pretty much everything about the skybox. And this is set up in the master material over here. Um, in terms of actual performance, uh, if I press Alt-8 on the keyboard, you can see the material is decently optimized. I wouldn't say it's perfect, like it's not in the, in the, perf you know, in the perfect category, but it's still pretty, pretty okay. Uh, the planet itself with the ring is actually a lot more uh, consuming, you know, resource hungry than the skybox. Um, so let me just go back into lit mode. 
Um, but yeah, you can you can pretty much load anything into that. Um, you know, any 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 HD or any cube map you can load into the skybox. It can be used in scenes that are not necessarily to deal with space. It could be on on just landscape uh, skybox, which again is very rich because you can add all these you know effects like this. Um, and and this is um, this is all driven by a blueprint. So this blueprint is a massive sort of chain. So what what this is doing is effectively creating a dynamic material instance for the dome, uh, which is the skybox mesh. And then it's just setting up all the parameters for you to be able to just in the blueprint, uh, uh, you know, um, in, in the viewport, you can actually just access the blueprint and just add everything there. So that's what this blueprint is doing. It's very straightforward, very simple, but it does the, you know, it does the job of allowing the material instance from here to exist in the blueprint interface. Now you can, just go into your scene and add the sphere and then make it really big and add the material to it, the material instance to it. Um, so this particular material instance, and that would do the same thing as what the blueprint does, but then you have to edit everything for the instance. Again, it's really your choice. I thought about making it far simpler by using a blueprint. So yeah, that was pretty much um, what I wanted to show you guys in this um, project. Um, as you can see, you know, for example, the video memory can easily be exhausted when you're using uh, textures, you know, 12K textures. And for this particular skybox, I'm using two different 12K textures plus the alphas, which I would definitely recommend you downgrade to like the alphas to 2K and maybe the, the skyboxes themselves to below 8K if you're going to do that in a video game. The, the the entire you know the setup itself is very mainly oriented around using this uh, in cinematics but you can easily use this in video games just by converting those textures into smaller resolution and you can maintain most of the detail anyway by doing that because you're, you're downscaling but you're not actually you know you're not rendering them at a low resolution you are downscaling from a high resolution to a lower resolution so in essence it should be okay um, so yeah, this budget over here, I mean, it's also uh, over the budget because I'm not using any texture streaming and most of the, most of my, t uh, most of my, uh, budget is eaten up by this planet anyway. Um, you know, I mean the planet now, you know, it's going down to 400. Um, and if I take one of the sky boxes off, it will go down to something like two, 300, but that's on a 12 K texture, as I've said. Um, so yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoy the content. Please le let me know if you have any questions or do you need, if you need any help with setting this up, but if you get the content on Gumroad, our station or Patreon, it's pretty much set up for you to use straight away. So I would really like to thank my Patreons for supporting me and all the people on the Discord server who have been really helpful. If you want to learn more and if you want to be helped directly by myself and other people uh, that, that you know are really passionate about space environments in Unreal Engine, then please consider entering the Discord server and we can have a chat and I'm sure we will be able to, find, to, to help you with anything that you might need. Uh, once again, Thank you for the support and I see I hope to see you guys in the next one. Uh, thank you.